Oh baby, we're recording on the new camera. What is up, Rap Potential YouTube? Welcome to the Insta 360, but not 360 camera. Hopefully, uh, man, this thing looks awesome in the like horribly, terribly lit day of uh, hurricane something coming through. Let's see how good this thing is in the dark. All right, arguably. Not that good. Okay, so welcome to today's video. We're getting ready to do some cool stuff on this car, and by that I mean simple maintenance. It's really not like super cool, but we are going to be replacing the water pump gasket. And you might ask, didn't you just put that water pump on? Yes, I did. Did you just put this water pump on? It shouldn't have leaked, it was a new gasket. However, it happens, stuff leaks. So, I gotta pull basically the entirety of the front accessory drive off of this car. So, alternator, water pump, air pump, the whole nine. It's crispy. Another thing, and you're, you guys are gonna be like, what the heck are you doing? I didn't think you ever sold parts. Well, I really don't. But when you have a friend that needs something, you generally try to hook them up. So, here's, oh, excuse me. So here's what I've got. I have an S4 Turbo 2 fuel rail. Somebody else has an S5 Turbo 2 fuel rail. Well, they're making substantially more horsepower than me. So they need that one so they can put AN fittings on it. And uh, I might sell them that one. But I need to get up here in the attic or the lack thereof and basically go and find... Um, to make sure I have two of them because I'm not going to give away it. Give it away. I only have one. Got to have two. Pretty sure I do. Um, if I recall correctly, this one is over here because it was a spare, and I had it hanging on the wall. And the one that I have from my FC, which if you didn't know, and you're here for the first gen stuff, and you haven't been around for forever, I used to have the FC. It was sick. It was white. Turbo two swaps convertible. I had it as an NA convertible for a while. It was like a super fun car. I sold it to my dad. And uh, I have all the, the parts up here, which I'd be surprised if y'all can see. Man, this camera's killing the game. The only thing is it's, it's only on a stick. It's not on a, uh, a tripod, so I can't like, put it anywhere. Upon further investigation, I did not have a fuel oil up there. Man, it is fixing to hurricane good. Thought I saw the dog way out in the yard. But, I have parts everywhere because I'm a parts hoarder. And if you look right there, that is a pair of Series 4 turbo fuel rails. Would you just look at it? Oh yeah, this car is going to be sick one day. You just wait. It used to be sick, but uh, I sold it, and the guy I sold it to took it apart and then sold it back to me. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, so here's a fun fact. If this even makes it in the video, I'm kind of just running this to test the new camera. We might just stick it in there. The Series 4 fuel rail is the bomb diggity for any stock turbo 2 lower intake manifold. Okay, your primary fuel rail mounts to the center iron, right? There's two injector ports there, which this is not FB stuff, but we'll just call it. Anyways, the S4 fuel rail is cast aluminum and it's threaded on each end so that you can, like, the this is the fuel pressure regulator, actually. This is just a fitting, but it's threaded on each end. It is a different size threads, but you can buy dash six or four or eight, whatever size AN fittings you want to put on here and then just run this fuel rail with dash six line. Same with the primary. You can take both of these off that's threaded and you can use that. Now, I don't really think I have one super handy because I don't stock them, but an S5 fuel rail, okay, series five, their fuel rails are stamped steel, so the FPR and the pulsation dampener are built in, and you can't put dash six or whatever fittings and lines and stuff on them. It just kind of sucks. So hopefully this makes it in the beginning of the video, or at least you guys got to watch all of that while I solve this problem.
guys. It's off. Sorry I made you watch a little time lapse, but no big deal. We got it off now. Um, on this unit, you can visibly see where it's been leaking through the gasket here on the bottom. See how wet it is. Um, and basically what was happening is it's just leaking water out the bottom of this, dripping down the front cover, and and making a mess in my clean engine bay. And uh, we don't like that. So, what I thought was going to be the issue is that I w didn't have my super thin washers on there, but as it turns out, we do. Um, so I guess I just got to get this cleaned up. And get that put back on there. Um, I am... I think y'all would benefit from a video of me doing it. I've got to order some stuff from Atkins. So I may do an OMP rebuild video. Um, but I don't know yet. I do have some other OMPs laying around that look like they're functioning perfectly. So I may just snag one of these. And make sure it's the same and just put one that I know works on this car. And then rebuild this one for you guys. So... Look for that in a future video, but I'm pretty sure I have an OMP over here I can use and rebuild. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned, and we're going to put the water pump back on, and uh, should be good to go. Tip from the wise, this pulley right here, if it's not riveted on, put a bolt back in it such that it won't spin. Um, if it does spin, your timing marks be off, so you want to make sure that that stays there. But, uh, but yeah, as far as replacing the water pump itself... When you have this off, keep in mind, this just has the air pump still on it. Um, you're going to take this bolt out right here, this bolt out right here, and this bolt out right here, and the water pump will come off. You do not have to remove the housing from the car. However, every bolt that holds the water pump on is also a bolt that holds the housing. So most likely, if you go to just replace the water pump, the housing may come loose and you may get a leak behind it. So my thought would be pull the whole thing off, put a new water pump in it, and then put it back together. So, fun stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, repeat the process with new gaskets. All right, my guys, so quick one-two on making your own gaskets. Get you some gasket maker, the paper kind. It's a little thick. Do some cool stuff with it. You're going to take this gasket right here, the gasket maker. You're going to lay it on top of what you need to make a gasket. So I'm going to make a new water pump gasket. So you're going to lay this on top of here. We're going to put a screwdriver through both of these holes. Let's see. Phillips work best for stabbing stuff. Man, I really am going to have to change up this whole camera apparatus here. Oh, where are we at? Oh, there we are. So put a screwdriver in that hole. Come on. Come on. Where we at? Oh, miss. There we go. Alright, once you get a screwdriver through both holes, this way it doesn't move around that much. You know, give me a second. Alright, so here's the deal. This is the new thing I was holding my camera on. This is what I was using before. I think we're going to switch to what I was using before real quick. Handle, okay. Reasons the same old handle is nice is because I can set it on something smooth so okay I can set you guys down like this and I can use both my hands all right so when you get your two screwdrivers in there you just need to hold this flat you're gonna take your favorite hammer and just work your way around tapping on it okay and you get tapped all the way going to start form fitting its shape. The ball peen side works great for the inside.
This is literally one of the most satisfying things to do. Okay. Once you make tappy tappy all the way around, pull your screwdrivers out. And take a good look at this. Boom, that's your gasket. Literally print it on there. If you tap hard enough, see how it already pre-cuts it for you. So now that I have it marked and tapped, I'm gonna use my skizzers. We're gonna cut this out, we'll have a perfect gasket. You even already got the holes drilled for you. Alright guys, we're done. Finally. Only took like I would say honestly an hour of focused work time. Um guy hunter came out earlier. I sold him a S4 Turbo 2 fuel rail, um, local drifter guy, um, basically a really good friend of a friend, but no, I normally don't sell parts. Um, anyways, I had spares, I sold him one. This is all done, water pump's back on, few things to remember. Um, put your belts on before you tighten the bolts to your fan, makes that whole deal easier. Um, make sure you get your belts, not too tight, but they need to be tight. Um, if you have a double alternator belt, then they need to be tighter than these. These really help drive everything with the crossed belt set up as well. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Like I said earlier in the video, I personally like to leave the air pump on if it's there, just because the air pump is kind of a pain to get all the way up in there with all the bracketry, and it's not that hard to just pull it all out together. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed the very first Rad potential video on the new camera. Um, if you've watched prior videos and you've watched this one, comment below if you think it's better. Let me know what you think the audio quality is. I can only hear so much of it on my computer. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for some more stuff if you want to see RX-7s. Justin still works on BMWs if you want to follow along with his BMW stuff. And uh, yeah, this weekend we're going to film another episode of Driving Force. So next week, look for that. Thanks for watching. Keep it red.